Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. So, story time. Ever since we learned how to make our own coins, which was covered in this episode here, Maddie has been kind of obsessed with it. Because we have like the business YouTube account we share, every once in a while I just see a bunch of videos pop up in the history of like how to make coins, how to engrave your own coins, smelting coins. <laughs> it's seriously an obsession. Anyways, in hunts for sponsorships, she went ahead and reached out to Omtech, which is a company that makes like really high-end lasers. And she was like, hey, could we maybe have one of your lasers and we'll do like episodes on them and maybe use them in projects or something. So I'm at the airport a few weeks ago and she called me. She's like, you never guess what just happened. They responded back and they were like, yes, yes, you can. She's super jazzed about it. This isn't just like a regular, like a CO2 laser or a tabletop or whatever. This is like a MOPA fiber laser. Specifically, this little gem here, the MP696980. And this one is their 80 watt model, which is, it's a strong laser. Like it's the first one we have that can actually engrave metal. So today I kind of just want to play with it. I want to see what it can do. Now I went ahead and set it up just over there off camera on its own little separate cart, mostly because the outlets that I had actually weren't rated for it. And that's something you should probably know if you do end up getting like a higher powered laser. Though it does work on the 100, 10, 120 volts that come out of my outlets, the actual like, you know, the little, little built-in fuses there to protect them, those things popped every time. So I had to actually change that out to one that didn't and then leave it on kind of its own line. Like you can't have anything else running on it because it draws so much power, it's gonna trip your breaker. Took me a bit to realize that during the setup, I'm not gonna lie. But after doing that and just kind of plugging my laptop that already had Lightburn, which is the software you use to use this thing in it, it was pretty much off to the races. It identified it really quickly, it's ready to go, so I'm really excited to play with it. And one of the first things I'm excited to kind of try is, is it isn't just a fiber laser, it's a MOPA laser which means that it can actually like laser in color. There's a whole bunch of examples of like the super vibrant colors you can get. So I'm, I'm really excited to play with this. Now this thing's kind of different than lasers I've used in the past in that you have this little crank at the top that you use to actually dial in its focus. Basically you have these multiple dots that you want to make one. And once there are one dot, you're in focus. So I learned from the YouTubes, the first thing I want to do is run a material test because I can have it do a whole bunch of different like powers and speeds and variations and see what that looks like in a grid. So we get to that, I just jump into the tools, hit a material test, and then put in all the parameters of what somebody said online. It's all very scientific. Another thing that's super different that I'm discovering is the fact that this doesn't just have like the, the couple parameters that other lasers have. Usually I'm either dealing with the power and the speed and like how much I want it to engrave. I just adjust that power and speed until I get what I want. This is different in that it does have power and speed, but it also has frequency and Q pulse which I'm not gonna lie, I have, I have zero idea what that means. And immediately, there is a problem. I am burning straight through this metal. The metal, by the way, is stainless steel. In order for you to get colors, it can only be stainless steel, I believe. Like, look at that. It went, it went right, it went right through the metal. <laughs> it's probably not good. Anyways, I, I think what happened in looking back at the video, what I think happened is that my laser there is an 80 watt laser. I didn't pay attention. And the person who put in those little parameters, theirs is a 30 watt laser. Mine is, mine is significantly stronger. So yeah, I'm gonna dial those back a little bit. And at this point, I'm 100% spitballing. I started up again and I kind of let it go through its digs here. This time, at least it didn't go through the metal. So, you know, baby steps. But I didn't get any color, just kind of a gradient from like black to brown to almost nothing. So I just keep fiddling around with some more plates of stainless steel here. And you know what? I started to get some progress. My problem was, is that I still had, I still had the power up too high. I had to bring it down to like 40%. With that, I went from having these kind of ugly browns down here to some actually nice color gradients. So this seems like a lot to dial in. I was able to achieve this in just a few tries. This thing is super user friendly for beginners. Long story short, after fiddling around with it, it's really easy to use. I went through two plates of stainless steel to make this happen. 
But you know what? That was time well worth it because, because of that little number scale there and the details that's on here, I now know. I know in order to get this very specific color, I just go at this speed, this power with these other parameters that are listed on the top. Like this is now my little cheat sheet for this particular kind of material, which that's really cool. I can now do like my skill tree logo with the tree in yellow and the background in blue because I have, I have those two colors now. That, that's really neat. I don't have to like paint it or anything. I could just kind of laser print color. But that's only one part. And honestly, it's not the part that, that Maddie's most excited about. The part she's most excited about is the fact that it can engrave metal. Like not just mark metal, in, like cut into it. So for a challenge for this, I decided I wanted to make challenge coins. To do that, I've actually picked up this little kit of like laser engravable uh, coin blanks. I got these on Amazon. I'll leave a link below if you're interested. And we pop them open and they're, they're just nice. They're kind of like textured on one side. They get the little ridges along the corners and they're a good size or a good weight. I think they'll be fun if I, if I can get it. I don't know. Because it's the art that I have, the, the design I'm gonna use is on one side, I'm gonna put my tree. And then on the other side, I'm actually just gonna use this shirt that they keep leveling up you on the other side. Uh, one is like super kind of low detail and the other one, like we got a lot going on here. So let's see how it does. I just started with the tree file. This bad boy's just in black and white and size to the inside of this coin here. I'd like to tell you, I did a bunch of fancy work for this. I didn't, I just, I already have the files. So I've just got to drop it in, hoping for the best. I'm also winging it with the parameters here. With a speed of 50%, a power of 90, and a frequency of 40, I'm just throwing spaghetti at the wall here. That being said, we've established I know how to cut metal, so I'm, I'm kind of staying close to that and hoping for the best. And yo, check this out. Shut up. Look at how cool that is. It's dirty, like it's all black. I'm hoping I can polish that away. But look at that. That is so cool. It's really, really deep. I might have went overboard. I hope when I go on the other side to make the other one, it doesn't it like cut all the way. We're gonna see, let's figure it out. Okay, so we know we can do that. Uh, there's another thing that I read about though that I really wanted to play with specifically for like this design and doing a challenge going. And that's the fact that you can, you can make the different like layers of an image like 3D or, or have depth, I should say. So all you have to do is you make the image various shades of gray. So black will be like the part that's furthest back, white will be the part that's furthest front, and then the gradients of gray in between will be its own separate kind of layers in the image. So if I do this right, the, the, the outside rim of the U will be the furthest part out, then like the, the part inside of the U will be a little bit deeper, Next will come the tree and the keep leveling up. And then finally all this detail before it gets to like the back flat part of it in, in theory. And again, I'm not 100% I'm not positive. We're not just gonna burn through this coin. Yo, super six. I swear, I swear I'm not this good. That was a, that's a resounding success. That looks incredible. Again, it's super dark and kind of burnt looking, but like, that's slick. I know I've seen people do videos where they, they like do a, a, a another pass or something that cleans it up and makes it shiny after. Is that a thing? You can tell me down in the, the comments section. Because so far, both the front and back of this are like black when it comes out. And I'm hoping I can polish it. This seems like a victory. It looks really cool. But unless I can actually polish it up, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see, let's see how it goes. Okay, so to do this, I'm actually just using this like Dremel polishing set I got here. And methinks I will start with this, this wire brush. And we're gonna see how that works out. Let's try and keep the Dremel away from the microphone as much as we can here. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's gonna work out just fine. Already, I can't explain to you how jazzed I am that this is working. That's so cool. Here, let me, let me do this a little bit more and get back to you. All right, look at how dope this is. Oh, I got that tree almost down to like a mirror polish. Oh my God, that's so pretty. And look at the other side. Look at the depth. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. The, the U is up, everything else goes down a little bit more. Oh my God, it's so cool. Oh, look at that. I am 
I'm stupid excited about this. And the whole thing, I wanna say it took around 20 minutes per side to print. So not the fastest thing in the world, but honestly, not bad. And this thing could be used for so many projects, like gifts, wallets, coasters, engraving glasses, really anything. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought this episode would be a lot longer because I thought I'd have to fiddle with this and have a bunch of failures, but this was like one and done. Like everything I wanted to do, I managed to get done with very little failure. So yeah, Ohm Tech, y'all do a good job. This is a good, this is a good ass laser. That's probably why they were so confident. They're like, you know what? Don't worry about it. Just let them know what you think. Cause it's really, really good. Now, obviously I know this bad boy is probably gonna be a little pricey, but man, if like all their products are this easy to use and are this good, you could probably get one of the, the, the more budget models and I don't think you'd, you'd go wrong with, with using them. They're really great. I'm gonna leave a link to them in the description below. If you're at all thinking about getting a laser or maybe like you wanna start an online business and where laser engraving is a thing, it will pretty much pay for itself. I almost went online and bought a whole bunch of these because I wanna make them for you guys. A few batches of these and I could have just bought that. So they are our sponsor for this video in that they gave us a laser to use, but like we can say whatever we want. So take that for what you want. All right, well, thank you for hanging out with me while I figured this thing out. That was a lot of fun to use, but I do know this was odd and I do thank you for sticking around. So I'll tell you what, leave, leave hashtag challenge in the, uh, in the comment section below. And I'm gonna pick one of you at random. And I'm gonna send you this. I'm gonna send you our very first skill tree cat challenge coin. And oh my God, it's so pretty. I was so excited about it. But I am willing to part with it for you. Huge thank you, like massive thank you to Ohm Tech for, for letting us try this thing out and, and use it with such like little guidelines. Really cool of you. I think that was neat and it, it shows your confidence. Again, if you have any interest in a laser, I recommend the company. They're fantastic. Link in the description below. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, give me some of that like it love. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. In the meantime though, keep leveling up you. You made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It's a fantastic way to support this channel. Another fantastic way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon members and we cannot do this without them. An extra special shout out to our Grandmaster level Patreon members, Froggy, Dragon Designs, and Yuri Sandro. If you like what we do here and would like to support us, consider joining our Patreon, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can click on one of these videos YouTube thinks you'd like, and that helps out a lot too. Yo, what should I make next? The possibilities are literally endless. So cool. <laughs>